All right, so now that we kind of have a basic understanding of what the VBA language consists of, it's finally time to start writing some VBA code. And the first few lines of code that we will be writing is on how to reference a range. So we will be using the range object to represent a range within a worksheet. And this range could be a single cell, or rows of columns of cells, or even a selection of cells. So the range object can represent a variety of cells within the worksheet. I will be showing you many different ways on how to reference a range, because depending on your needs, one way might be more useful than the other. So for this video, we will be working inside the Range Object Sheet tab. So make sure you have this sheet selected. Now inside of our VB editor, the code within our Module 1 is a little bit messy. So I'm going to start fresh with a new module, which is Module 2. And if you don't have another module, you can come up to Insert and then select Module. And for clarity purposes, I'm going to click on Module 2, and down in the Properties window, I'm going to change the name of this module to Writing VBA Code, which is the name of the section of this course. And if I click Enter, now our module is named Writing VBA Code. So inside of this module, in order to start writing lines of code, we need to insert a sub-procedure. So I'm just going to click inside this code window and type sub and then give it a name. I'm just going to call it ref range, short for referencing ranges, and click enter. Now over here in our workbook, we will be inserting values in each one of these cells using a variety of different ways on how to reference a range. So let's start with the first one, selection. Currently, the cell B2 is the cell that we have selected. So if we come over to our code window, and if our goal is to insert a value into that B2 cell, we can type selection dot value, and then tell Excel what we want to insert inside of this cell. So we can type in equals and I'm just going to put in a text value saying select. And any time you use text values inside of your code, you have to make sure to surround it with quotes. So if I run this sub by pressing the green play button, let's see what happens. Excel inserted select in cell B2 because that was the cell that we had selected. Let's move on to active cell. So if we select cell B3, this is now our active cell. And if we come over here to our code window and type in active cell dot value equals, I'll just put active. And before we run this sub procedure again, I'm going to comment out this first line. And to comment out a line of code, you can either put in apostrophe at the beginning of the line, and if you select somewhere else, you can see that this line turned green, which means if we run this sub, Excel will not execute this line. Another way to comment and uncomment lines of code is to select the line that you want to comment out, and up here in this toolbar, you can click uncomment block, and it uncomments that line, or you can click the comment block, and it will comment out that line. If you don't see this toolbar, you can click View, Toolbars, and make sure to select Edit. Now let's run this sub and see what happens. Excel inserted Active because this is the active cell that we have selected. So selection and active cell are very similar, but active cell is only one cell. A selection could be a range of cells. Now let's do cell B4. 
But for this one, we don't actually have to have this cell selected. So I'm just going to select cell C1, come over to our code, and this time we will use the range object. So first we need to type in this workbook. Because the cell that we want to insert a value in is inside our VBA practice workbook. And since we have multiple sheets inside this workbook, we need to tell it which sheet is this cell on. So we can type in worksheets, open parentheses, open quotes, and then we can type in the name of the worksheet, which is range object, close quotes, and then close parentheses. Now we need to tell it which cell that we want to change the value of on this worksheet. So we can type in range, open parentheses, open quotes, and the cell that we want is B4. So we can type in B4, close quotes, close parentheses, and then access the value property equals, and I will just type in cell B4. So what this code is saying is that inside of this workbook, on the range object worksheet for cell of B4, input the value of this text. So let me comment out this line of code and then run our sub. And we can see that this text value was inserted into cell B4. So this was the long way of writing out this piece of code. For example, let me show you the quick way for cell B5. Let's comment out this piece of code. And beneath it, we can just type in range, open parentheses, open quotes, B5, close quotes, close parentheses, dot value equals cell B5. And that's it. So if we click play, it inserted that text value into cell B5. So you might be wondering why we just didn't do that the first time. Well, I wanted to show you this hierarchy because inside of VBA, you might want to reference a range that's on another worksheet or even in another workbook. So we could change this workbook to a name of a different workbook and then we could change the sheet name to a different sheet as well. But if you are just wanting to reference a range on the active sheet that you have open, you can just start with the range object and insert a value. So now instead of just doing one cell, let's do a range of cells. So over here in our workbook, we need to write a line of code that can insert a value from cell B6 to cell C7. So now we have multiple cells. Let me click out of this, then comment out this line, and start adding a new line. We can start with range, open parentheses, open quotes, and then we can type in a range similar to what you would see when you're selecting a range of cells when building a formula. So here we can type in B6, colon, then C7. Close quotes, then close parentheses, dot value, equals, and I'll just put B6 through C7. And if we run this sub, it has entered this text value in this whole range of cells. We can also reference a named range using the ranged object. For example, up here in our name box, there's a name range called in range. And if we select it, it selects both of these cells. So these are the cells within our named range. Well, if we click out of this, come back over to our code, comment out this line. This time we can type in range open parentheses, and then type in the name of our named range, which was n, then rng. 
close quotes, close parentheses, dot value equals, and I will just type in our name range, which is in RNG, close quotes. And if we click play, now that text value was inserted into all the cells within our named range. Another way to reference a range is by providing the row number and the column number of the cell that you want to insert a value in. For example, let's come back to our code window, comment out this line, and this time instead of using range, we are going to use cells. And then we can put open parentheses. And here we are trying to insert a value into cell B9. Well, for cells, it's asking for a row number and a column number. So for this cell, we know it's in row number nine because it's the ninth row down. Then we can put comma. And for our column number, we can put two because column B is the second column in our worksheet. Then we can put close parentheses dot value equals and I'll just put cell nine comma two close parentheses close quotes and if we run our sub that text value was inserted into cell B nine because it was the ninth row down and the second column over. Now let's do one more. So let's comment out this line and let's use cells again, open parentheses. So for our row index number, we need to put 10 because the cell that we want to insert a value in is in row 10, comma. And now for the column number, instead of putting two, we can actually just put the column letter, which in this case is column B. So we can put open quotes, B, close quotes, close parentheses. And I know that we've been putting dot value at the end of our range objects, but by default, if you don't put anything after the object, it automatically assumes value. So technically, you don't have to use value if you're inserting a value. We can just put equals, and I will just put cell 10B, close parentheses, close quotes. And if we click play, it inserted that text value into cell B10. Now the reason why I wanted to show you this last one, because let's say your cell was all the way over to column AD, you would have to count each column to get a number. So instead of counting, you can just put the column letter. So those are some common ways of how you can reference a range using VBA.